in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed there are four of these kinds of destiny help us and I want to share with you very briefly and then we are going to pray number one the first dimension of destiny help us that we will all need in our lives to rise to that position of influence that will help us fulfill our divine mandate they are called divine connectors divine connectors Second Kings, very quickly, please. Chapter 5. Divine connectors. Who are they? Ordinary people who do not have the power to change your life, but they can connect you to who has the power to change your life. They do not have the ability in themselves to help you. Please help us, media. 5 from verse 1. The Bible talks about a man called Naaman, the captain of the Syrian army. And the Bible says he was an honorable man because by him the Lord had given deliverance. So it was the Lord that gave him deliverance, yet he could not get healing. Look at your Bible. It was not the devil that gave him deliverance in war. God gave him deliverance in war. And yet the Bible says he was a leper. He was excelling in one area of his life, but there was this question mark. In this area of his life number two next verse the Bible says the Syrians had gone out by company and brought away a captive out of the land of Israel a little maid see the description now a little maid suggests gives an idea of a, a small girl who was just a captor from war and the Bible says she waited on Naaman's wife verse 3 and she said unto her mistress would God my Lord wear with the prophet that is in Samaria for he would recover him of his leprosy. That little girl one day while serving Madame, she said, Mommy, I've been looking at your husband. I know this is not the best for him. Even though he's a great man, there is more he can get into. I don't have the power, but I know a prophet in Samaria. Let me tell you this. It takes the first key that you will need to receive from divine connectors is discernment because they come in forms that may not be easily receptive are we together now it may be a newspaper seller who will just be holding a newspaper with your vacancy and he's just waving it at you and while you are laughing at the slippers he's wearing you are not seeing what god is showing you for the sake of your job he made the traffic light to stop so that you can see discernment this is why only humble people receive from these kinds of people sometimes it can be your little child and he comes to tap you and say daddy pray and you know that he's always throwing tantrums but this talk the Holy Ghost inspired it this one is not just a child talking and that prayer will be what can save catastrophe that is coming in the future when it has to do with divine connectors god can use anybody to speak to you your great man may be foolish for more than half of the year but that very day he will say at least something i'm, I'm respectfully i'm not you know he may be acting and you are always saying oh this foolish man but that day he can say madam uh there's something i want to share with you and that can be the one idea this pain you are going through like this i once worked for another madam and there was a doctor that used to come and visit her would you want to see that doctor and that's your miracle 
For those who do not have discernment, you, let me tell you, according to the law of times and seasons and the law, the laws of God, the Bible says that time and chance happened to them all, whether you are born again or not. That means someone has come into your life sent by God that if you had the discernment, you would have seen what God is saying through them. Divine connectors. You will find them everywhere, even in this church. Who knows whether your neighbor is one? Are we together? Mm. The most powerful lesson on faith was taught me by our little children in the ministry. They come and they don't care whether you are tired. They don't care whether you have been preaching. Church starts for them after the grace. They come and stand and they can just say, Daddy, bend. I want to tell you something. And I'm like, ah, somebody is joining the line to see me. And here comes this child, pushes everybody and commands me to bend because he wants to tell me to buy bobo or biscuit. And I'm saying, okay. <laughs> Do you know why? Since I called myself father, I must pay the price for carrying that name. So when the Bible says we have a father, I go back to God and say, God, I don't know who is on the queue, but I have come not to God. I have come to Father. It says when you pray, say Abba, Father. It's not just to pronounce the name Father. Come with this understanding that you are meeting a giver. Hallelujah. How many people have been saved because they could listen to supposedly non-entities. Please, I'd like you to leave this assembly today sensitive, ready to see and learn from everything and everyone. Sometimes you can sit down and just watch two birds playing. And while you are watching them, suddenly you sense that there is an anointing on that scenario. And God says, I'm about to deliver your business. But watch, the strategy will not come from a lecture in a university. I am using inconsequential animals to show you something. Do you have the grace and the flexibility to receive the ministry of divine connectors? Because for many of us, until we see people who are great, we do not have regard and honor for people. You will miss so many things. Many of the people who will make you great are not great themselves, but they know those who are great. You must be sensitive. While you are looking at the corridors of power, be careful. The taxi man who carries you can share with you something that will change your life. Divine connectors. Ordinary people like that slave girl, but they have the power to connect you to great people. It is true. Number two, let's hurry up. Men of access and influence. This is the second category of destiny helpers that you need. Men of access and influence. Let me assure you in the name of honesty that there are times you do not have access to the gate. You will need someone who is already at the gate to speak for you. You may never have the luxury of defending yourself. You will only need somebody whose credibility has been established to speak for you. Many people do not know this in business. Many people do not know this in politics. Many people do not know this while rising. Building a track record for yourself sometimes will take your lifetime. You will need to convince someone who has a track record and leverage on his integrity and years of sacrifice to say, hear ye him. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, sir. There are people today whose businesses can step into superior dimensions. There are people today who can be granted access to so many things at ease. Please do not neglect people of influence. Their voice has power. Their names are great. They hold keys in their hands. And God can use them to open a door for you. Oh, this young man, you've been looking for a job. Okay, here is a little note. Go and give this person. Just tell them it's from me. And that's it. That note can work wonders in your hand. 
Do you know why it's difficult to receive from great men? Because many people have not studied the protocol of relating with the great. The dynamics of relating with great people is such that you must study. You must sustain the adaptability to great people are busy people. Great people sometimes can be arrogant people. Great people are people who will inconvenience you beyond your imagination. You do not relate with a great man at your terms. No. So if you, if you put your ego on the line, is it because you want to give me a job that you are wasting my time? Oh dear, you just finished your interview right there. Look at Elijah and Elisha. Do you know, theologically speaking, Elijah was a temperous man. I'm not sure I want to work with that kind of person. An angry man. Just for disrupting his fellowship, fire burns you. What did Elisha endure to receive the double fold? Adaptation is proof of honor. Hallelujah. Greatness. You must trust God to have men and women of influence who can be able to speak for you. There are times that your level of growth would not have gotten to that dimension where you can confront the powers that be. You will need to leverage on the sacrifices and the credibility of people. There are many people who receive rewards in the Bible for the sake of others, not for their sake. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Not for his sake. So it's time you begin to pray and say, Father, grant me the grace to honor every great man around me. Because I will not lie, I need their credibility. I need their credibility. There are dimensions I want to get into. Do you know it is amazing that the person you are seeking help from has a friend? And what if his friend likes you? Hmm. Esther invited her man to the banquet too, even though she was going to kill him. Because even if it's for a short time, her man was still the king's right hand man. Ignoring her man to show that she was out to kill the Jews, she would have died like a chicken. So she said, Everybody is invited. Her man, you too, come. She honored him to his grave. <laughs> you must receive grace. Some of you, after this conference right now, you may need to pick up your phone and find one of your uncle or someone that every time you call, you are saying, uncle, so are you trying to say you are not aware there's COVID-19? You see, that kind of attitude of entitlement is a very dangerous attitude. I'm sorry, but I will say it. Forgive me, but it's true. You cannot constitute an inconvenience to great people and claim you are a stakeholder in their success because of relationship or bloodline. No, you must sustain the intelligence. Auntie, this is to appreciate you. Thank you. It's been, it's been five years since you blessed me, but it's still like yesterday. I am grateful. Thank you very much. That they didn't reply does not mean they didn't see it. You are not the only one reaching them. But something about your consistency and your sincerity will stand out. And you may think they are not observing you until the day they send for you. They can bring 12 years in one hour and bless you. Listen, let me tell you something. Great people do not always respond to you. But the day they do, oh, you will be glad you stayed. You will be glad you stayed. You are trusting that he will give you a house rent, whereas he has five estates. One day he just looks at you and says, come with your wife. You think he's coming to quarrel you. As soon as you enter, he gives you a key and says, that one at that side, please. Whereas you were trusting God for money to pay rent and keep suffering again. And God just used the man to wipe your tears. Please, I hope you know that I'm not being sarcastic. Listen, hardship is not a good thing. And as soon as you can get out of it, trust God for grace to get out of it. These are the systems that bring us out. Hallelujah. Please do not ignore great people. Whether in this church or anywhere. Do not resist that temptation of trivializing their sacrifice. 
Don't get into that sociological thing of speaking and say, is it because God has blessed you? Why didn't he bless you too? Because the same Lord is rich unto all. Remember, I told you to pray before I start teaching. I told you to pray. Don't blame me for what this is doing to you. I asked you to pray. We, we, we said we will receive grace from God. This can be a word for someone right now. Why am I praying and yet I'm not rising? I am 50 years. I am 55. And my life is almost an embarrassment. And God says, hear my servant. This is what you have done to everybody. You have called everybody your classmate. You have called everybody your colleague. There is no classmate in greatness. You must submit to greatness and open up yourself to receive. Don't say I was in the university with this. I was this. This person that was not in. He was my younger brother's friend. I agree with you. But it's not profiting you now. Jesus had to submit to John the Baptist. Even though he was the word of life. John said no, no, no. I know you. You are a great man. He said suffer it to be so. Otherwise my ministry will be destroyed. You are the spiritual voice in town. I can't ignore your relevance and rise. How many preachers will want to excel in this city and come and see someone like our mother and just say, ah, it's just our mother and just and go around and be suffering as if God didn't call you. Please listen to what I'm telling you. How many people want to start a business and they see someone already thriving there and they just ignore him, they move around and you know. You've heard my story. One time I was traveling somewhere and a very great man in this nation was seated. He was sitting on my seat. And um, one of the cabin crew women wanted to walk him. And I rebuked her. I said, don't, don't try that. This man has achieved more than I'll ever achieve in my life. Don't ever. If there is no seat, send me anywhere. I just want this thing to move and land me wherever I will land. The man did not even know I was discussing about him to say thank you. But God saw that honor. Who have you dishonored to your detriment? Whose greatness have you trivialized as if God just helped them? Nigerians, hear me. We are making a big mistake. Africa, hear me. We are making a big mistake. There are people who have labored and deserve no matter what level they deserve their due honor and dishonoring them to prove a point will cost you supervised by God. Someone will insult his CEO, insult his boss, go and sit down and tear him down and yet be praying secretly for the same company. You want to have the same cooperation. You have already killed the door for reproducing that same result. Men of influence. When God taught me this, I developed a healthy respect for successful people. Oh, Apostle Joshua Selman. He's just lucky. Just a young man that God is using. In every generation, God raises people. You think like that and see whether God... I will not criticize you, but I will never prophesy to you. <laughs> Brothers and sisters... From this place, make up your mind. Make up your mind. Some of them are even your parents. They gave you a leverage you never would have gotten. And yet we are the first to criticize them. They were not serious Christians. They, yes, I agree. But with what they know, they made sure you didn't live a very bad life. Have you gone to honor them and bless them? These are the systems of greatness. Number three, the third group of people you will need in your life are gifted people. 
there are times you need more than divine connectors. The men of influence will give you access to their wings and the leverage of their credibility. But you need gifted people. Those who can get the job done. The best corporations in the world have mastered this. They will pay the price to get the gifted people and triple their salary. Instead of wasting their resources on different people who continue to become leakages to their profits. Gifted people. Sometimes you just need people in your life that can get the job done. Sincere people are wonderful, but it takes more than sincerity to produce results. Some of us, our lives are full of many sincere people. They will never destroy you, but you are also not moving forward. You need to trust God for gifted people. In your company, gifted people. Your workers, gifted people. Your staff, gifted people. Skillful and talented people. They use their gifts, their skill, their talents to help you achieve God's purposes. It's important. There have been people, even in business and in life, they may not be exceptionally smart as individuals, but they are surrounded by phenomenal people. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, especially for every man in this church, that God will surround you with gifted people. Their job is to make our work easy. Imagine a young man who forgets every instruction you give him. Oh, do this and he says, ah, I just forgot. How old are you? 22. You see, that, that is he's not a gifted person. He may be a sincere person. But it may not work that way. You need to trust God for gifted people. Gifted people in your life. Lord, bring gifted people in my business. Bring gifted people in this ministry. Bring gifted people in my corporation. Bring gifted people everywhere. When a nation has gifted people, it will thrive. When an institution has gifted people, it will do well. When a ministry has gifted people, it will do well. Number four. The fourth set of destiny helpers that you will need in your life, they are called burden bearers. Mm. These are trusted and faithful people who will stay with you through storms. They will stay with you through challenges until your glory is revealed. Ruth chapter 1. Please give us verse 16. No matter who you are in this life, times will come and days will come, storms will rise, challenges will come individually, corporately, and so on and so forth. You will need people in your life who can cry with you. You will need people in your life who can rejoice with you. You will need people in your life who are not using you as a ladder to achieve their purposes. The Bible says, Ruth, remember the story of Ruth and Naomi, and Opa, her sister, her sister-in-law. Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee or return from following after thee, for whither thou goest, I will go. And whither thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Let me tell you this. One of the most painful things for any leader is to get to a point where your life is shaken and find out that everybody you've labored for for decades and years were only looking for things to go. Look at Jesus. My question is, when Jesus was carrying the cross, where were the people who ate the bread? Remember those people that ate the bread? They even said, we'll make you king the next day. Please be careful when people are clapping for you. They are only clapping for their bread through you. There are few people in their life who can covenant and say, if you are dying, I will die with you here. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, sir. Most leaders die of heart attack because of the sheer pain. Having in, they raise many people in their own homes. There are many of you here, as I'm talking to you, you have been in pain for years. You raise many people in your home. They didn't even know the difference between them and your children. And today, those people have the effrontery to start to stand and speak evil and speak ill. It can be painful. But there are a group of people sent by God. They come into your life not looking for your glory. 
they come into your life. The Bible says this man came and met David in the cave of Adullam. David was running away from Saul for his life. They would have met him and said, what a weak man. You call yourself a warrior. And yet they looked at him and they said, we will make sure you rise and become king over us. So even in that your state, we have taken you as king over us. How many people have run away from CEOs because their companies crashed? They were there to serve, oh, our great company. And suddenly they hear that things are going down and they fold themselves and run in a heartbeat. How many people serve men with power and authority hoping to rise? And one day you hear that this man has, has been diagnosed of an infirmity and they fold their hands and run away. This has happened in politics. This has happened in government. This has happened in ministry. This has happened in business. This has even happened in family life. But that God will surround your life with people today who you can sleep with both of your eyes closed because you trust that they are in your life to die with you. They are not people who stand with you. They are people who can die with you. Are we blessed? But the first prayer there is to not pray that they come. Is to pray that you become one. Who will now come to you and be a burden bearer when you are not one? Many of you have heard me say it. By the grace of God, mommy, I made up my mind that outside of being a man of God, my life's goal is to become a shoulder for people. I am that one person who when you are crying, I can be, if I cannot clean your tears, at least I can cry with you. It is so comforting to have people in your life who are completely not needing your greatness. Oh, what is wrong? I was just told that I have cancer. Hey, where is your faith? And then next time you call them, they say, I'm busy. No. Cancer? Then me too, I have cancer. We are dying here. You know why I'm saying this? So that God will grant us grace to coordinate our energy and not waste our time and our lives on people that at the end you think you have invested in pillars, not known that you have invested in chaff. Hmm. Hallelujah. How many of you today, God forbid, but let's assume that as mommy is standing right now, God forbid. Let's assume that her leg just starts paining her. And she said, how many of you can say, mommy, I will carry you on my shoulder? Don't be too quick to say, me, oh, it's hard to be a burden bearer. Our daddy was sharing something that touched me. Sir, you see why your message really touched me? When he was talking about his mother. Do you know what it means to be paralyzed from neck down? Think of the, 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 the maintenance and yet, for others, they will leave. offense will not even let them preach Christ again. Joseph of Arimathea carried that cross. And he says, I may not die for the world, but I can help you. God has brought a few of these people in my life. And I can tell you, it's a gift to have people. And I pray for you, may that burden bearer be your wife, oh. Or may that burden bearer be your husband too. Because if they are not, no matter who you are, times will come in your life where your faith will be challenged. People have been betrayed by their business partners. They sat together, they ate together. Do you know, in my opinion, I believe that one of the best person to Jesus was Judas. Judas was not a wicked man. Judas was just a selfish man. He wanted to use Jesus to do business. Because at the, it just that it backfired. Judas could not use the money to spend it. The people who were wicked that were forgotten to talk about were those who came for his crusades. They ate the bread. They saw the miracle. Where was Jairus' daughter when Jesus was on his way to, 
Where were all these people? Where was the woman at the well? And yet he was on his way to that lonely cross. Crucify him! Jesus was looking at him. Yes, you are seeing me. Crucify him. <laughs> Let his blood be on our children. But you ate my bread. Crucify him! You think I liked you? I only heard that a celebrity was in town and I came to eat bread. Let me submit to you sincerely. Most of the people in your life are looking for their greatness through you. It doesn't mean they are bad. It's just the reality of living in today's world. And the day they find an option or they do not find you fit to provide that in a heartbeat, knowing that already helps you to shield your heart to know who is worthy of your commitment. Because we make the mistake of investing our all in just everybody arbitrarily. No, save yourself that pain. And find people who by the spirit are true burden bearers. Because there are. Don't get used to the disappointment and the betrayal and the pain caused by people in our sociological sphere. And conclude that everybody is like that. My goodness. I have seen people in this life and I believe there are many of them in this church. Who have that dexterity. They can say look I, I will stand. I will stand with you. We will cry together. Oh I just lost five family members. And he's asking you all kinds of unwise questions. I came from a background where my local assembly, my local church, they didn't really understand the things of the spirit so much. But if someone had a bereavement or something, in less than two hours, you will see a group of women singing choruses, some with rice on their head, some with whatever, marching and they will sleep in that house sometimes for days, comforting the woman. But many of us today, we don't want to be associated with pain. When someone receives a promotion, we are there. But when someone is in a position of embarrassment, uh, I'm a bit busy. We always do not want to be associated with pain. Unfortunately, if you are not there with me at the place of pain, don't expect to be invited at my dinner table. This is the reason why when people rise, they shockingly go back to their memory and look. When I was crying, whose voice did I hear crying with me? And they said, if you cried with me, there are people today who have used their being burden bearers as a stream of income. That is the only thing keeping them today. The person they cried with and helped vowed and said, if God ever lifts me, you must eat bread from my table. We have to pray. That this mandate we are talking about is only achieved through influence. And that this dominion and influence has pillars. When you see certain people rise in life, it's not necessarily a measure of their competence. It's not necessarily a measure of their personal intelligence. But that some of these people have been wise enough to cry with great people before they became great. Do you know the prayer you have to pray? Father, lead me to cry with somebody who is about to be great tomorrow. I may not know now, but Lord, let my tears be part of the, his history. Please listen. Listen to me. This is a call for action. This is more than just a message. It is a call for action. You will be surprised that some of you can make up your mind and say, I may not have access to some of the influential people in this church, but I will write their name on my prayer altar. And every day as I lift my voice to God, I am saying, Lord, I'm praying for our uncle. I'm praying for... They may not see you, but the justice system of God will fish you out one day. Hallelujah. Do not rejoice when great people are in pain. It's not a testimony. Can you be there? 
Some of us today, our parents and loved ones are sick. We have not spoken to them in months because we think our mama is always demanding money. I agree, she would have killed you as a baby. The mere fact that she gave birth to you, you have an eternal debt towards her. This is why the heavens of many are closed though. It's not always just about demons and attacks. These are the systems of the kingdom. I heard a story that Miles Munro gave. One of his deacons who became a very strong man in church. This man was always beating and frustrating his wife. And then he would run to church. Or I think it was the other way around. The man hated God and all of that. He would beat the wife. The wife was in church. And the man hated church and hated pastors. And one day he reached out to her. And he said, what's the problem? And she said, my husband hates church. He hates pastors. He hates everybody. And he said, why? He said, because I don't have time for him and everything is church. And Miles Monroe looked at her and wrote a note. He said, go back home. I said, sorry, sir. You are driving me from church. He said, go back home. Go and tell your husband that your pastor sent you back home to come and take care of him. Now, listen. So he went back. She went back home and told the man. And the man said, what did you say? Your pastor sent you to come back and attend to me. He first kept quiet. You know how men are. They won't talk what they are thinking. After a few days, he now called and said, okay, uh, who did you say that your pastor is? And then she followed him to the church and sat at the back. And Dr. Munro came and greeted him and said, thank you, sir. And said, wow. Eventually, cut the long story short, he became a deacon in that church. Because he said, I wanted a pastor who could teach a woman not to neglect her responsibility in the name of spirituality. And now I found one. Now that man at that point was a burden bearer. He was willing to lose his membership to make sure a man's home is restored. Can you go that far? Can your ego go that far? Can you sacrifice that much? There are times in your life that you will have to help even undeserving people because you are just being a burden bearer. It may not happen always, but one day you just have to close your eyes to say, if I depend on your being responsible, your wife will die of hunger. So for the sake of your children, even though you are not willing to hear, still take. Has God spoken to anybody here today? We are going to pray. Strengthen my spiritual connection. Lord, help me to contend for transformation. To sustain superior belief systems. Help me to be productive and to be exceptional. And then, oh God, help me to see that the ministry of men might be the key that I've been ignoring. Please lift up your voice in one minute and let's pray. We're wrapping up. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, please, we are going to pray and commit all the men in this church. You are going to pray. Whether it's your father, whether it's your husband, whether it's your uncle, you are going to pray for every man. And say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we drive the plagues of darkness. Satan, you will not afflict the men in this church. They are mighty men of valor. Lift your voice and intercede in one minute for every man in this assembly. The Anchor Men's Fellowship. Do you believe in the power of prayer? In the name of Jesus, we speak over every man. In the name of Jesus, we declare over every man. Shalandas kabarato sazige debeletus. Kaparus kabada shalandas kabalande sebelekatus abrahas kadebeletus. Every man, in the name of Jesus, 
we bring before you their families we bring before you their finances we declare that the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous let they dip, lest they dip their hands in iniquity we declare that their children are well taught of the lord and great is their peace in the name of jesus every man in this church is rising from glory to glory you will preserve them oh god you will honor them pray over their influence we declare in the name of jesus increase their greatness comfort them on every side increase them politically increase them financially increase them in their career in the name of jesus the christ of god increase them in their health hallelujah we're going to pray he said i desire to come to you even i paul once and again but satan hindered us we're going to contend with every power fighting the destiny of any man in this church whether it is the power of the grave whether it is the power of foundations please lift your voice in one minute and cry to the god of heaven in the name of jesus we contend with forces by the power of the holy spirit that every force that wants to reduce every noble man in this church to become an object of shame to become weak and mediocre we stand in the name of jesus with the leadership of the anchor men's fellowship and the pastorate of this church we declare that those chains are broken we declare in the name of jesus the christ of god rising from glory to glory rising from power to power hallelujah please don't be tired i apologize for the time we're wrapping up joshua said as for me and my house not you alone me and my house every man here is going to pray for you and everybody within your sphere those who are not saved they must be saved lord i will not train arm robbers our mothers and the women can also pray my womb will not give birth to someone who will be a disaster to society please lift your voice and pray in the name of jesus that everyone who is under my leadership i declare by the power of the holy spirit i will raise noble men I will raise excellent men, exceptional men. I will raise gatekeepers, captains of industry, men and women whose voices will speak the purposes of God over a territory, over a dispensation, over a generation. Lift your voice and pray. Pray for your children. Pray for those under your care. I rebuke the spirit of rebellion I rebuke the spirit of laziness in the name of Jesus from the least to the greatest I speak over their lives I forbid them from being weak it will never be that I've labored in vain over every one of them Pray for their salvation. Bring them, oh God, to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Final prayer point, and then we're done. You're going to pray lord show me my geography of influence listen there is nothing more disastrous than escorting people in the journey of life and not knowing where you are standing the bible says and lot went with abraham lot did not have any personal program for his own life when lot left abraham we the next time we hear about him he's in sodom about to die the Bible says without vision, the people perish. 
first to the men and that includes the young men and then every other person listen your prosperity and your relevance is not everywhere you must know the geography he said lo i come in the volume of the book there are some of you who right now are in career but your place of relevance is in politics and government you will never find fulfillment that cry you will keep having dreams of yourself in government and there will be no rest listen please hear me do you know that you don't succeed for yourself the only gift you can give yourself is fulfillment fulfillment is your personal gift to yourself fulfillment is the satisfaction derived from knowing that you have spent your life effectively serving the purposes of the kingdom and being a blessing to humanity it is the only gift you can give yourself because for many of us we are wasting time swinging like a pendulum from one geography to another searching for relevance we are going to pray lord i believe that there is a definition for some of us god is going to say start a company start an ngo raise people he will commit to you certain things for some of you god is going to say politics do not allow decadence to happen on that mountain for some of you is the area of education god is going to say mentor and raise people please lift your voice and pray Show me, oh God. Show me, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, my sincere apologies. The Lord just put it in my heart to just one prayer, one prayer request that I think it may not have been good justice if we don't say that. My life changed. I'm a young man. But my life changed, sir, when I watched the obituary of a man many years ago. And in five minutes, that man's life was compressed in an advert. I don't know where they got the photo of him when he was small. You know the photo of our parents, that old one that you print in a dark room. And then they showed him when he was maybe about a teenager. Then they showed him probably in his mid-twenties, now married with the wife. Then they showed him maybe in his forties. Then maybe, I think he died at maybe 80 something. And then they showed him when he was now sick. And then they showed him during the final hours. Everything was compressed in a slide. And I watched a man's life of 80 something years in five minutes tears rolled out of my eyes that day and the spirit of God the scripture that came to me was oh teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom it had such an impact in my life that in our school of ministry I designed a curriculum that deals with effective living under personal transformation because in all your doing if you do not live your life effectively there is a real problem that there are four stages in any man's life the first is the learning stage the first 25 years of your life it is expected that at that point in your life you should have gotten born again filled with the holy spirit and you should have started learning the principles of the kingdom that is the phase of your life you can make mistakes and go scot-free the afternoon stage of your life is the next or the execution stage is the next 25 years of your life that is supposed to be the prime of your impact in most cases under normal circumstances then the third is the stage of legacy the next 25 years that is when you begin to build institutions around your convictions you write books that document your persuasions that is when you begin to turn back and mentor a generation out of your own story and your own pain and the last season is the last 25 years of your life it's called the season of rest doesn't mean death rest 
every one of us here whether you like it or not you are in one of these seasons and whether you are prepared or not time is passing last prayer point lord i want to live effectively i want to live effectively let me spend my remaining days effectively please lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before I go back to my seat, I want to sincerely appreciate the Uncle Men's Fellowship. I do not take it for granted the time you have given and the trust to be able to bring God's word. And I hope that this that we have communicated alongside that which our father has brought and many others that will come i trust that it will add to strengthening the men and the membership and even the leadership in this church it is my desire that god will continue to take everyone in this church and every anchor man from glory to glory in jesus name okay just please while standing I've, I've just been given um two three minutes um usually for those of you who follow my meetings know that it usually doesn't end this quiet uh you know having to minister to people but now we're restrained by many things number one the context of the meeting and then number two the COVID situation so that uh this place does not become unruly but um our mother did request yesterday that it would be fair to just speak over people. I believe in miracles. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe that we serve a God who can intercept the activities of men and reach out to people. And we just have two, three minutes. I know that there are many of us here carrying burdens, sicknesses. There are men here carrying all kinds of stress. The devil is out to kill men choking them with all kinds of burdens but i also believe in the power of the holy spirit <clears throat> there are miracles in the name of jesus there are liftings in the name of jesus there is healing in the name of jesus he will break every chain now if you are sick in your body i'd like you to just lay your hands there as a point of contact any part of your body if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just lay your hands on your chest as a point of contact high blood pressure stroke cancer blood diseases and every kind of evil report agree with me as i pray in the name of jesus in the name of jesus right now i rebuke the spirit of infirmity i decree and declare over the anchors men fellowship over family worship center and the body of christ following in the name of jesus be healed be healed from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet i rebuke high blood pressure i rebuke stroke in the name of jesus i rebuke every growth in your body everything that has not been planted by my father i command it to leave your body now every medical report that is a death sentence before you right now in the name of jesus the christ of god i command that it bows to the name of jesus migraine headaches heart palpitations in the name of jesus be healed every blood related condition be healed right now if there is any mother in this place any woman here or any family that is yet to enjoy and rejoice over the fruit of the womb i stand here and i prophesy in the name of jesus according to the time of life i veto whatever medical report and i decree and declare you carry your children in the name of jesus
Memory loss, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Eye condition, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And Father, we use our uncle and our father. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.